What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a class of 2024 wide receiver that has 39 Division I scholarship offers. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it can teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to know the daily things you should be doing in the gym to improve your speed, your explosiveness, your power, check out that very first link in the description below for you can get access to a four-month wide receiver gym workout schedule. It's 16 weeks where we break down everything you should be doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., with sets and reps and examples of each exercise for the wide receiver specific position. So check out that very first link below if you're interested, fellas. Let's get started with this video. So we're looking at routes here today from Jeremiah Smith. So this first example here is um, kind of this like crossover release that he uses on a slant route. Now, obviously, there's a big hesitation that goes into this release, but I think that he is one of probably the smoothest route runners in the class. And today we're going to be breaking down this crossover and why this can work. So obviously, this like kind of slower paced release, like this kind of like almost like hesitation walk release where he stands straight up is nothing that any receiver coach is going to teach. I think if you're teaching this type of release, that's not something that's good to teach to somebody who maybe doesn't have the athleticism that Smith has and the size that Smith has. Because when you see this guy against just any regular size player, he looks like just a tree towering over them. So if you're a smaller guy, I don't recommend starting out the release like this. But this is the same timing as any kind of slower paced release. But he uses this crossover move, right? So this crossover is what I want to talk about because you can tell a lot about a receiver in terms of his cuts, in terms of what he can do off the line by like the smoothness of his movements. And when he hits this crossover, it is very smooth. He's hitting this inside foot. This is inside of his frame. Anytime that you guys are doing a crossover, you want to step in the direction that we are going first. So if I'm trying to run a slant and I'm squaring up this DB and I want to hit him with a crossover and I'm on the left side, I'm stepping with my inside foot first. So he steps with this right foot. Now the key is to be able to sell the outside. The crossovers we're trying to sell, like we're going fade, we're taking and like just a quick little speed release, if you will, and go into the outside. So that first step of your crossover that you take has to be inside of your frame because this step needs to push you. It needs to throw so you can actually throw your hip and step outside of his frame. Because when you can step outside of his frame and actually sell with your upper half, step outside, that's what gets this DB to either freeze or to move to the outside. And that's what can get a separation. So it'd be him being able to do that, and this is from maybe a couple years back, I believe, but that showcases that he's very smooth with his cuts. Now, one of the reasons I think that he has all these offers is just because he's an explosive playmaker. And when it comes down to it, if you're a guy who's trying to play college football, wants to get in front of coaches, I'm going to play this full speed. You have to be an explosive playmaker. You have to be smooth with your movements. You have to be smooth in and out of cuts. And here is another example of him being an explosive playmaker. This is why he has 39 Division I offers, because he can go up and make plays like this. Fellas, you know, a lot of times people love to throw around the term like, oh, he's a five-star, he's a four-star recruit. And, and a lot of people always wonder like, hey, what can I do to get that four-star, that five-star ranking? At the end of the day, whether you're a four-star or a five-star, it does not matter. What a college co a college coach could care less about what a recruiting site that has guys who have never played football before give you in terms of your ranking. But it's a heavy publicized work. And I say it myself because, you know, it's a way to distinguish guys who are going to be playing power five college football. But at the end of the day, what a college coach wants to see is he wants to see this on film. He wants to see guys who can make plays. He does not want to see the guys. You know, I, I we see a lot of highlight tapes. College coaches see a lot of highlight tapes. And they're never looking for the guy who can just run a quick slant, catch the ball and just kind of fall down after seven, eight yards. They're looking for a guy who could go up, go win a jump ball go moss this guy, go get it over his head. That, that's what we want in a, in a college receiver, especially a power five wide receiver. Because if you're making these plays in high school, like that's what you should be making in high school if you want to be a power five guy. Now, maybe you're not the jump ball guy. Maybe you're maybe a quicker slot type receiver, but you need to have some kind of explosive plays to stand out. Now, when it comes to a catch like this, is there any kind of technical element to this catch? The only thing I would say is anytime you're going up for a 50-50 ball, most important is you want to go up strong. And he showcases this right here. He goes up for the ball. He's going up very strong. He's obviously he's taking it away from the DBs, doing that head top catch that everybody loves to talk about. But when he takes this ball away, I want you to see what he does with it. He rips it away. He's ripping this thing over the top of his head to make sure that we secure it. On any type of jump ball, fellas, that's what a coach would be looking for. That's what they're looking for in those top two your guys. Can he go up and make the play, but can he secure the play? Can he secure it and rip it away and almost use his body as a shield between the defender? I think he probably should have ripped this and pulled because I think if this DB was a little bit more aware, he could have knocked that ball out on the way down. But nonetheless, going up strong, ripping the ball away and securing the ball. 
That's how you can show, show out and be able to stand out on film as one of those jump ball 50-50 playmakers. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job going up for this ball, ripping it away, and then securing that catch. Okay, so last clip but not least, this is going to be him running kind of a curl route. So the reason why I want to showcase this, and I do realize this is seven on seven, but seven on seven, you always get a great look to see it, how a guy can run routes. How can a guy get in and out of breaks? And I think that, you know, oftentimes you get these five-star guys and I've seen it, you know, the high, highly recruited guys, they don't pan out at the next level at the college level because they don't know how to run routes. I think Smith 100% absolutely can run routes. And this is a perfect example of it. So he's got a DB who's in like zone coverage or off man. He's bailing out of there. He does not want to get beat deep, obviously, because look at Smith. He's probably 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, it's extremely fast. But can he change direction and can he run routes? Because in college, if you're playing Division One college ball, that guy you're going up against is going to be six foot, runs a 4'4", 4, 4, 40. He's going to be able to run stride for stride with you. He's got technique. So you have to bring other tools to the table more so than just your size. So let's play this full speed. So he bursts up here. He's attacking this DB and he's able to put the brakes on on a dime. That is very, very hard to do just to change direction on a dime for a taller guy. That is very, very difficult to do. Now, some of the things that he does very well that all wide receivers can learn from is his ability to make it look like a fade. If you're a taller wide receiver, or maybe you're you know a bigger wide receiver who's not on the faster side of things, to get separation on routes downfield, like digs, post, curls, comebacks, whatever, you have to make everything look like a fade. Because being a taller guy, hell, even being a faster guy, you're always a threat of the deep ball. You're always a threat of that jump ball, that deep shot over the top if you're fast enough. So you have to be a salesman with your routes. That is what they're looking for at the next level. So when he's bursting off the ball here, I want you to look at his stride. His stride does not change. So many wide receivers are uncomfortable breaking in stride that when they get up to a DB, they start chopping their steps because they're preparing for the break. They're starting to slow down before they make the break. We can't have that be us. Every single route that you run, you need to be able to cut in stride. You need to make sure that you have another thing called good pad level. So if I'm a DB and I'm watching you and I'm watching this wide receiver run and tall guys love to do this. And right before the break point, they start to raise their chest up because when you pop your chest up, it's obviously easier to break. That's an indicator on the route. We have to make sure that nothing changes. My speed remains the same. My stride remains the same. And my body language remains the same to force that DB to have to bail so I could get separation and snap down. That is exactly how every pro wide receiver will run this stop route, curl route, everything. And for him to be able to do this at this level showcases that when he gets to the next level, wherever it is, he will be successful. So, fellas, you're always going to be matched up against somebody faster than you, bigger than you, and your route running is what will get you open against that specific type player. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Smith pushing up vertical, attacking this DB and getting him to bail out of there. Great overall route. All right, fellas, really want to thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time.